Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. Today, we are going to be discussing a truly freaky thing, a humanoid in the loosest sense of the word, the thing dubbed the Spectre of Winterfold by Charles Bowen. This particular incident occurred a little after midnight on November 13th, 1967, and lasted only about two minutes, so this is a very short encounter, but truly bizarre. So on that night, a 22-year-old by the name of Philip Freeman and his 20-year-old friend Angela Carter were driving from Cranley to Shear in the district of Surrey. The road they were on passed through wooded hilly country, and it was completely dark. No other cars were around. The evening had been rainy, and the night was still overcast by this point. As the car hadn't been running long enough for the heater to come on, the windows began misting over. So around two miles away from Cranley, Philip stopped the vehicle to clean the windshield. As he exited the car, he suddenly became aware of a strange odor, which he later compared to either burnt food or even a stink bomb. It was strong enough that Angela also smelled it from inside the vehicle, and apparently later he would identify that the smell was actually stronger inside the vehicle than outside once it occurred. So Philip finished cleaning the windshield, climbed into the driver's seat, and was horrified to see a face looking through the passenger window right past Angela. Now, maybe face isn't the right word. He actually claimed that it was this oblong shape, about 10 inches long and 8 inches wide, and absolutely blank. This face was bright white, and considering that the only lights around were on his vehicle, Philip actually wondered if it may have been slightly self-luminous. And freakiest of all, it was lurking very close to the window. Now, the thing seemed to stand even with the top of the car, so it stood about four and a half feet tall. At this point in time, Philip could only make out that the rest of the body was dark, aside from a white arm of sorts, which was placed on the car's hood. Now, Philip claimed that immediately he felt very cold and terrified, which must have translated. Angela had been talking about the disgusting odor as he entered the vehicle, but when she saw the look of horror on Philip's face, she refused to even turn around to see what he was looking at, and just told him to start the vehicle and get the heck out of there. In the one, maybe two seconds it took Philip to start the car, the creature moved to the back of the car, its face close to the back windshield. As the couple sped away, Philip took one quick glance back um, and was impressed with the notion that this thing was bell-shaped and it lacked any sort of legs. As soon as they left the area, the smell vanished. And again, the whole encounter probably only took about two minutes. So what do we make of this truly bizarre case? You know, the first thing to stand out to me in particular is the facelessness of the entity. I made a short video on faceless beings some time ago, and this one certainly would have fit the bill. You know, intriguingly enough, when we think of this thing as bell-shaped, it kind of reminds me of the silhouette of many other famous faceless freaks, including the Banshee, the Woman in White, the many faceless monks or nuns. However, again, this thing is lacking any of those defining details. It is simply this silhouette. Um, which really makes me wonder, you know, again, I've talked in the past about how, you know, many of these encounters seem to be kind of almost in formation. And to me, the lacking of details in this case in particular, with that silhouette that is congruent to other faceless beings, you know, I just have to wonder if it's almost like we're seeing something that isn't fully formed. Interestingly enough, according to the ParanormalDatabase.com, a mere 15 minutes away near Chilworth, there is a claim of a faceless cyclist from 1960. I'm currently looking for more details on that case, as it seems almost like a modernization of the headless or faceless rider of yore. And, you know, it seems really intriguing. So if anyone has any details on that, I would love to hear it. However, back to the task at hand. I feel the strangest thing about this concept in particular is this. Why would something without a face, without eyes, press its face against a window as though looking in. You know, regardless of actual form, these beings seem to continually perform function after function that may or may not fit them. And this case is a perfect example of that. Now, the arm resting on the hood calls to mind the Snatiski encounter of Flatwoods fame, which involved a couple and their baby driving near Frametown, West Virginia, the same exact night as the infamous Flatwoods monster sighting. This case also involved a nauseating either or sulfur-like smell, and the entity in question actually laid its hand on the hood of the vehicle, purportedly leaving a V-shaped burn mark. However, in that case, there was vehicular failure and an associated light anomaly. Of course, as pointed out both in the Flying Saucer Review article by Bowen and Joshua Kutchin's fantastic book The Brimstone Deceit, the terrible odor associated with this sighting is a common enough occurrence across paranormal fields. Interestingly enough, in the article, Bowen almost exclusively ties it to concurrent sightings of mystery cats in the early 60s in that area, which were apparently connected to a strong smell of ammonia. Oddly enough, too, is the fact that in this case, it almost seems to kind of be an inversion of many instances of car stoppage. Usually, as in the case of the Snitowskis or Doc Priestley's infamous encounter near Marlington, the vehicle starts failing, it comes to a stop, the creature or anomaly is seen. 
In this case, there is no vehicular failure or any other sort of related electronic disturbance, for one thing, and for another, the witness stopped the car to clean the windshield, a perfectly mundane task. The smell was noticed, the creature is seen. Yeah, I mean, talk about perfect timing. Was this thing just out for a midnight glide and it happened upon Philip cleaning his windshield? You know, again, we have this tricky word coincidence. Would the same encounter have happened several yards down the road? You know, really interesting to note too, and kind of following on with that concept, is the immediacy of everything. There was the burnt odor, which apparently became stronger in the vehicle than outside of the vehicle once the door had been opened. And upon getting back in the car, the creature was just at the window. Philip, I think, would have certainly noticed it coming up to the car, considering that it was self-luminous and the night was very dark. I think he would have noticed this kind of, like, gliding light source. However, you know, the fact that he didn't kind of implies that it was simply there. Then, once he was in the car, it was at the back window in the matter of a second. No moving from point A to point B, just here one moment, there the next. And finally, too, there was no lingering odor once they left the area. It just cleared immediately. It seems almost as though once they left kind of the scope of the event, everything ceased. Now, the immediacy of this encounter, to me at least, seems to lend itself to the concept that this event was tied exclusively to the witness, mainly Philip, observing it. Unless, of course, there is just some faceless bell-shaped thing with one arm that hangs around that area waiting for people to wipe their windshields. I don't really know. Now, one of my favorite aspects of this case, however, is the naming of this thing as the Spectre of Winterfold. True, it showed up without a saucer, but the strange, ambiguous, nearly kind of mechanical or robotic-looking shape still seems rife with UFO iconography. It reminds me of the infamous case of the Tin Ghost, observed in the French flap of 1954, which is the topic for another video. Um, but at the end of the day, this sighting, you know, it was very short. There wasn't really much exchange or contact, yet it is highly, highly bizarre. Well, if you enjoyed this video on the weird Winterfold wonder, please like, and if you're new to this field of crop circles, go ahead and subscribe to see what weirdness the future may have in store. Till then, you can keep up with whatever else I might possibly have going on on my website, justanothertinfoilhat.com, and for exclusive content, make sure to check out my Patreon page, which is also listed under Just Another Tinfoil Hat. For today, I am Zelia Edgar, signing off. Do we?